Hey there, is this Renee, the woman engaged to a man named Frank? Who is this? I bet that right now you're starting to get concerned that your groom hasn't shown up for your wedding yet, am I right? <laughs> you don't need to answer, I'm totally right. If you don't tell me who you are, I'm just going to block your number. So you have about 10 seconds to do that before I just dismiss you as some troll. <laughs> Someone's grumpy. I'm Millie. I'm a 19-year-old college student, and today I'm going to become the luckiest girl in the world when I get married to Frank. What? What do you mean? Is this a prank? Oh, I know what you're thinking. But I'm the one who's marrying Frank today. But too bad for you. Frank and I have been seeing each other for six months now. And today, we're finally going to get married. We're having a private ceremony for just the two of us where we'll pledge our endless love for one another. In other words, he's not going to come to your ceremony, so don't bother waiting for him. Now, I bet you're just about to start crying bitter tears of anger, jealousy, and sadness over this. So I recommend you go ahead and tell all your guests to go home before things start getting really ugly. <laughs> Millie? Are you the Millie who started working part-time at our company this year? Yep, that's me. Okay, well, thank you for letting me know the situation. What the... What's with that reaction? Were you expecting something else? Oh, I think I get it. You knew this was coming, didn't you? You had already resigned to the fact that Frank would end up leaving you eventually anyway, huh? <laughs> that's probably for the best. You're nowhere near good enough for him. After all, you're a 41-year-old woman who's never been married. <laughs> you have to know that no man would ever really want you. Aw, it's going to be really hard for you to find a husband at your age, huh? I almost feel bad for you. Almost, but not quite. <laughs> Sorry I'm such a bad girl and took your fiancé from you, but really, think about it. I think I speak for everyone in the world when I say this, but... <laughs> Who the hell would want to go to some old hag's wedding? <laughs> Gross! I bet your fat rolls are pouring out of your white dress. <laughs> and at your age, there is no way you would ever be able to have kids. I could go on, but I think I've said enough for now. It's clear that Frank will be way happier with a 19-year-old college girl like me than a dried-up old hag like you. I'm 19, you're 41. The choice is clear. It's like, what would you rather have? A fresh-baked loaf of bread or one that's been getting moldy beneath the fridge for 41 years? Oh, and in this analogy, you're the moldy bread. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to say to me or are you finished? <laughs> What's the matter? Are you starting to tear up now? I have some business to attend to and I was just about to step outside. Thanks to you, that business just increased tenfold, so if it's alright with you, we can go ahead and end this conversation here and I'll go on about my day. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, I see. Now you've got to go tell everyone waiting for you in the chapel that your fiancé left you standing at the altar because you're a dried up old granny. <laughs> no, that's not it. Oh, you mean no one was actually in the chapel anyway? It's like I said, who would want to see your cellulite-ridden carcass wearing a strapless dress? They'd lose their lunch for sure. Okay, well, I'll let you go and drink your sorrows away. Have a good time. As for me, I'm going to go and exchange wedding vows with my hubby-to-be, Frank. Wedded bliss, here I come. So long, Granny. Don't forget to take your Alzheimer's meds today. How goes the wine binge, you lonely old hag? I have a name, and it's Renee. Use it. If you're 19, then you're old enough to know what is and is not an acceptable way to speak to someone. Frank's mother, your future mother-in-law, will no doubt be on your case constantly about how you speak around her. And if you're really intent on marrying him, I think you'd better prepare yourself mentally right now for what you're about to get yourself into. <laughs> You're unreal. What are you doing here, trying to prove to me that you know Frank better than me? That you love him more than me? Well, I'm really sorry to break this to you. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. But I have a very, very important announcement to make. Would you like to hear it? Hmm? Would you? I'm very busy, so make it quick. 
And just a few minutes ago, Frank and I were officially joined in the bonds of holy matrimony. We're married! Wow. Already? Yeah, already. <laughs> Do you see now? That's how much Frank and I are in love with each other. Ah, being married at 19 is the best. None of my friends are married. They're all going to be super jealous when I tell them. Plus, that's definitely going to put me ahead socially with the other girls on campus. I can just be like, <laughs> step aside, girlfriend. I've got a husband. I can only hope that it goes that well for you. Please, keep it coming. Keep it coming. I want to take in all of your bitter jealousy. Oh, and guess what else? I'm going to move into Frank's awesome high-rise condo tonight. Ah, I see. So that's what you were after. Frank's 38, just three years apart from me, but we're both more than twice your age. I was curious what on earth you would possibly see in him, but everything makes sense now. Like I said, Granny, just keep it coming. I can taste the bitterness in each and every one of your texts. <laughs> I think you ought to know, however, that the condo Frank lives in actually belongs to your father-in-law. Oh, really? Huh, that's weird. But whatever. I don't care whose name is on the title as long as I get to enjoy my lovey-dovey time with my new hubby, Frank. Wow. You're something else, Millie. Not many people would willingly march straight into the gates of hell like you're doing right now. I commend your bravery. Huh? What do you mean, the gates of hell? But hey, if you're happy with that, then more power to you. Hold on, what are you talking about? You're kind of freaking me out now. Best of luck in your married life. You'll need it. Boy, that was a whole lot of nothing. What were you acting so weird for anyway? His condo was totally normal. Frank and I had a wonderful first night as man and wife. <laughs> I guess you were just trying to scare me or something. <laughs> what a loser. You are so super jealous that I get Frank and you get to die alone. Now I know that I was concerned about nothing, so you can't bother me anymore. So seriously, can you grow up and move on? I know you're probably never going to completely get over it, but I don't want you to be constantly trying to interfere with our marriage. Got it? You're going to have to face facts eventually, so you might as well do it now. You are never gonna have Frank. It is never going to happen. You read me? N-E-V-E-R. Never. It is over. Okay, I'm gonna go back and do a little more smooching with Frankie now. Toodles! Oh my God, being a bride at 19 is the best thing I've ever done. Like, bar none. I just announced on Instagram that I got married and started my life in a high-rise condo, and I am getting swarmed with likes. My phone is totally blowing up with notifications. <laughs> All the other girls are super jealous of me. <laughs> you should look up my Instagram account. Do you want me to tell you my username? I've got a ton of adorable pictures of me in my wedding dress. I look fantastic. It'll show you what you could have had if you were young and beautiful like me and not old and dried up like you. <laughs> Renee, what is going on here? I have no idea, you tell me. Frank's parents just got here. Frank's mom came right up to him and gave him a huge kiss on the cheek and called him her little Frankie Poo. I thought that was gross, but then, then Frank called his mom, Mommy. He actually called her Mommy. Oh. And then it gets worse. Frank said that his parents are gonna live together with us starting today. But that's not even all. Frank and his mom are gonna sleep together in the bedroom? And I'm gonna have to sleep on the living room couch. I've heard of mama's boys, but what the hell? Frank is 38. Let me guess, Frank's dad just looks at the two of them being an absolute gross fest, shakes his head, laughs, and pretends it's just some cute mother-son affection, right? Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. And why didn't he tell me anything about his parents living with us? Well, if you don't like the situation, you could always divorce him. 
Don't be stupid. I can't divorce him. I just announced to my Instagram followers that I got married yesterday. I'm not going to be a divorced woman at 19. You don't want to spend your youthful years getting nauseous at the sight of that giant mama's boy living out in Oedipus Complex, do you? But if I get divorced, my social value as a woman is going to plummet. Well, you know your options. The choice is up to you. And don't say I didn't warn you. I told you that you were marching straight towards the gates of hell, didn't I? Well... I told you that the condo Frank lives in is actually your father-in-law's. His parents run a pretty big real estate company, and thanks to them, Frank is able to live in condos and apartments that would ordinarily be way, way too far above his means. You knew about that? And it was precisely the mother-son relationship that's making you sick to your stomach right now that got me to break off our engagement two weeks ago. Wait, what? You broke off your engagement? Two weeks ago? Yep, two weeks ago. We both joined our company at roughly the same time around 20 years ago. So we worked together on a lot of projects, and eventually he asked me out on a date. His work was pretty good, and he seemed like a trustworthy guy, so I agreed, and we started dating. But then one fateful day, I was unfortunate enough to witness exactly how close his relationship with his mother was when I walked into the condo unexpectedly, and, well, after that, I just could never look at him the same way again. Wow. When I very honestly told him and his mother exactly how I felt about their relationship and why I was breaking off the engagement, his mother lost it. She told me that she had chosen me, an older woman, to care for him just like she always did. And she chose you, Millie, to fulfill his desires since you were younger and prettier than me. The last thing she ever said to me was, Fine, I knew you would never be enough to give him what he really needs, me. And if you're not going to look after him for me, then I'll just have to take care of Frank myself. Oh, and by the way, it was that little slip up by her that made me aware of your relationship with Frank, so you have his mother to thank for that too. Oh no. And that was my first reason for breaking off the engagement, his disgusting relationship with his mother. So wait, what happened to your wedding yesterday? What wedding? We canceled it a long time ago, obviously. But didn't you say that you had a lot more work to do because of me? I thought you meant that you had a lot of work to do to cancel the wedding. You know, call the venue, the caterer, the band, all that stuff. No, that's not what I meant at all. I was just so appalled that my ex fiancés mistress would so brazenly announce herself to me like you did that I decided to move up the timeline of the punishment I was planning for you. I had to get a last-minute appointment with my lawyer. I was lucky he was free that morning. What do you need a lawyer for? Which brings me to the second reason I broke off the engagement. As I told you a short while ago, I was aware that you had some sort of relationship with my ex-fiancé for some time before you texted me to rub your marriage to Frank in my face. What I didn't know was that your relationship had been going on for as much as six months, and that it was going on behind my back while we were engaged. In other words, that you were actually having an affair. Yeah, well, so what? I had been trying to get some hard evidence of exactly how long your relationship had been going on and how far you had gone because I couldn't move forward without it. But thanks to you, I now have all the evidence I could have ever hoped for. I'm going to sue the two of you for your affair. You can't sue me! You weren't even married yet! That's not an affair! Actually, as being engaged is, in legal terms, a contract, you could say that it's a form of tortious interference, but yes, I can sue you. My lawyer hasn't calculated the final amount yet, but you should prepare yourself to be hit for something in the realm of the low five-digit range. What? You can't do this to me! You have only yourself to blame for getting involved with an engaged man. I think the paperwork should be ready within the next few days, so you'll be hearing from my lawyer shortly. I do recommend you do exactly as he says. Fighting this will only make matters worse for you. This can't be happening! I don't have that kind of money! I'm still in college! Millie's parents had divorced and were both remarried to different people, and they had effectively cut Millie out of their lives. Ultimately, Frank's parents had to foot the bill for both my lawsuit against him and the one against Millie. With nowhere else to turn, Millie had no choice but to accept her new position in life living together in that condo with Frank and his parents. However, one day, it seems that Frank's father finally had enough of being a third wheel for his wife and son and told his family that he wanted a divorce. And since the condo was in his name, his wife and son had no say in the matter, so he promptly kicked them all out onto the curb. At the same time, 
Frank, who was enjoying his life married to a woman half his age, made a massive mistake on a project that cost the company millions of dollars. This led to the discovery of years of malfeasance from him, so he was unceremoniously fired. So now we find Millie in the situation of dealing with her psychotic mother-in-law and newly unemployed husband, who is also 20 years her senior. Frank was facing criminal charges for his malfeasance at his old job, so his employment prospects were less than zero. His mother was far too busy waiting on him hand and foot to even think about getting a job herself. In the end, Millie had to drop out of college and get multiple part-time jobs in order to support the three of them. Hey, Sarah, I heard you're living in our house. You got some damn nerve to do that. Oh, hi, Gabby. Um, yes, but you should think that this is not your house anymore. What the hell are you talking about? Do you think that you own this place or something? You only paid a little for the renovation. Are you serious? Did you not hear anything from your mother? About what? The current situation. I don't need to hear anything because I know that you just want to run through my parents' fortune, right? What fortune? I've never heard or seen that ever in my life. You are so conceited, you know? I feel so bad for my mom because she is tolerating with your harassment. Since I'm going home, I will not let you do that, you hear me? Coming home? Yes, I decided to have a baby there. Where? Um, at my parents' house? Are you stupid? Where are you going to stay? This is not your house. Enough is enough! That is my parents' house and mine, okay? Do you think that my house is yours just because you live there? This might be the reason that Paul is fed up with you. What are you talking about? If you keep on acting this way, you can get kicked out. This is my house, so there's no way I'm going to get kicked out. Oh, wow. You are so confident. I wonder if you can keep that confidence until I go home tomorrow. What, you're gonna stay here? It's my house, so of course! Until when? Why should I tell you? Well, what I know is I'm going to relax for a while after giving birth. I have no problem with you coming tomorrow, but please talk to your family because you can't stay here for a long time. Who the fuck are you? You should be grateful that you're able to stay at my house! And I've been telling you that it's my house now. You probably don't believe me, so talk to your parents, okay? I heard that Gabby is coming home tomorrow. What's up with that? You didn't tell her anything, did you? Oh yeah, she did say something about coming home to give birth. I just remembered. <laughs> Looks like things are not going well between her and her husband, too. I feel bad for her. Why are you talking like it's someone else's business? There's no way she can come here and live forever. I want you and your parents to get ready to leave because you understand that you can only live here until the end of the month, right? No, oh, uh, about that. Can you think about it again? What? This is our house, you know. Isn't it rude to kick us out? You should think about it a little more and then decide. Don't you understand that you're here because of what you've done? Why don't you find your own place to live? You don't need to be pissed off, you know. Anyways, she can only stay here three days max. Talk to her while you're here, and don't decide to negotiate with me because I won't. Hey! Where's my lunch? Can you prepare it before you go to work next time? You're such a useless piece of shit. Um, I'm at work right now. 
When are you staying at my house until? You're going to leave tomorrow, right? Did you talk to your family? What? Leave? I told you I came home to give birth. I will treat you like a housekeeper because your shitty attitude and all the trouble you caused. Didn't I tell you that this is my house now, so you can't stay here? I even told Paul you could only stay for three days. I didn't hear anything from him. Anyways, I will not listen to whatever you say because I'm your sister-in-law and the daughter of this house. If you can't listen to me, I will kick you out. Are you threatening me? Do you think that you can kick me out? Of course I can! This is my house! How many times do I need to tell you that it isn't? I have a higher status in this house, so don't even try to argue with me, okay? Don't act like you've won or something by threatening me. Why don't you listen to what I need to say? Do you want me to tell Paul to divorce you? I can do that, you know. Excuse me? Anyways... You will be my housekeeper, okay? If you decide to argue with me, I will kick you out and tell Paul to divorce you. Um, we are divorced already, actually. What? We divorced three months ago. Oh, you guys divorced? So is that why you're living in my house? You've got nowhere to go, right? <laughs> Get the fuck out! Please shut up and listen to me, okay? This house is mine, and not your parents. I'm the owner, but since you don't believe me, ask your parents. I don't need to ask because I know you're lying to me. I'm telling you the truth. We started living together because your parents failed in their investment and became broke, and couldn't pay the mortgage so they changed the owner's name to mine, so that's why you guys have a place to stay. What? Failed an investment? Yes. The reason I renovated the house was because I was trying to increase the value of the house with plans to sell or live by myself in the future. So it wasn't for your parents to begin with. Because they didn't even pay a penny. Why did they rely on you, though? Wait, what will happen to Paul, then? He works part-time at a 7-Eleven. So I think he doesn't have money. I mean, he does, but since he was cheating on me, maybe he used all of it on her. What? He was cheating on you? Yeah. That's why I divorced him. I didn't know that you guys got divorced. I'm shocked! <laughs> You're shocked because you will not be able to use the divorce as a threat, right? Also, the fact that the person who you call a housekeeper is the owner of the house, right? Anyways, going back to the story about my house. I'm paying off the mortgage now, so if you want this house, you need to pay me, okay? What? You're making us pay? Of course! I own the house! I know that your parents paid the mortgage in the beginning, but I've been paying it for a while now. And even then, the owner name has changed to mine, so... Do you think you can still stay here? So we really need to leave this house? Yes, your whole family. They promised to leave at the end of the month, so why don't you guys find a house? What? You're seriously going to kick all of us out? Yes, I am. I can't even afford a house with only Paul's salary. You can just go home to your husband's house, you know. I can't, because I was kicked out. Oh, so it is true. Your husband sent me your belongings and divorce papers, which I thought was weird, so I called him. And he said he caught you cheating, so he doesn't need you anymore. What? You checked without my permission? Hey, it came to my house, and I just called the number that was on the package. I told him that I divorced Paul for the same reason, and he was really sick of you two. I was too, actually. Shut up! That's none of your business! Yep. Exactly! So that's why I don't want anything to do with you, so please leave. I'm asking you nicely. Where would we go? My parents are going to help me give birth! 
Don't decide to come crying to me, okay? We're total strangers now. Why are you so mean all of a sudden? Me? Don't you think that you're the mean one? You decide to come home not knowing anything and calling me a housekeeper. I just misunderstood. Can't you at least say thank you to me, though? I was nice to you and took care of you. Um, no one in your family took care of me. So whatever you say, I will say no. Don't think that I will help you. I will apologize for Paul. So can you give me the house? Sure. Really? Wow, that was easy. Did you understand me? I can be your friend if you want to. The house will probably cost a few million dollars, so please buy it with that price. If that's okay with you, I can lower the price, but I don't think that it will be possible because no one will take out a loan. Plus, you guys have no savings. If you want to earn that much money, why not become a housekeeper? Not mine, but someone else's. I don't think you can handle it, though. I kicked all of them out of the house and was able to sell the house. Paul and Gabby's mom had to pay the alimony for the infidelity, and now they live in an old rusty apartment and are living a shitty life. On the other hand, I'm living my best life since I have money from selling the house. It's very clear that when you treat others like crap, it will always come back to you.